all of you can give your attendance in the chat box i repeat all of you can give your attendance in the chat box very good afternoon sir good afternoon <clears throat> it is around 3:14 pm so now i can start the class so give me a minute so that i can present my screen can anyone confirm me whether my slides are visible or not yes sir visible yes it is visible okay we have almost came to an end of second module today we will be solving two more problems related to theory of failure and by the end of today's class we will be completing this second module and in the next class that is on thursday we will start with the third module if you remember i think in the last class we have did this problem if anyone can respond yes sir yes sir okay okay so in from uh, in the, from last few classes i think one or two classes we have started solving problems on uh, theories of failure today also we will solve two to three problems and with this we will end up this module over here itself so let us solve the next problem fifth problem read the problem the problem is a shaft is subjected to a shaft is subjected to a maximum torque of 14 kN meter and a maximum bending moment of 10 kN meter at a particular cross section determine the diameter of the shaft according to maximum shear stress theory of failure elastic limit in simple tension is 180 that is 180 mega pascal so can anyone tell me what are what all things are given in the problem can you tell me what all things are given in the problem so torque is given at 14 kilo newton meter uh, yes the shaft is subjected to a maximum torque of 14 kilo newton meter let us and assume that the value of, is given the value of torque t is 14 kilo newton meter what else is given so bending, bending moment sir maximum bending moment is also given in the shaft that is 10 kilo newton meter let us write maximum bending moment by the term called m so m is 10 kilo newton meter what else is given what else is given elastic limit uh, is given sir elastic That's limit is given if elastic limit is given then it is which value syt value or sut value sir yield one yes elastic limit in simple tension means syt is given to me that is yield strength 
whereas sut is ultimate strength fine so yield strength value is given to you that is syt is equal to 180 mega pascal what uh, i need to determine i need to determine the diameter of the shaft using maximum shear stress theory of failure so in order to solve this problem first of all i have to recall the statement of shear stress theory of failure what is the statement of shear stress theory of failure according to that failure any mechanical component will fail only when the maximum shear stress of the component if you see this is the maximum shear stress of the component this is the maximum shear stress of the component when this maximum shear stress becomes equal to maximum shear stress of a standard specimen which is undergoing a tension test that is this value that means in order to find out the diameter of the shaft in this problem firstly i have to find out the maximum shear stress of the component on the basis of the given values and those given values are bending moment m equal to 10 kN meter and torsional moment or torque t equal to 14 kN meter with the help of these two values i need to find out the maximum shear stress generated or induced in this problem that is the component shear stress and then i have to equate it with the maximum permissible shear stress of simple tension test if you remember when i was discussing the concept of shear stress theory of failure i have told you that in maximum shear stress tau max is equal to how much tau max is equal to 0.5 times of syt this we have derived that in maximum shear stress theory of failure if a specimen is tested in utm then we know that in utm stress on the specimen act in uniaxial direction so from the mohr circle we have derived this relation that is tau max in case of simple tension test is 0.5 times of syt we can also write this expression as 1 by 2 times of syt and if factor of safety is taken into account then the same equation of tau max becomes syt by 2 into factor of safety so this value will be which value this is nothing but this tau max value and by the help of this torque t and this bending moment m i have to find out the maximum shear stress of the component and then i will equate both the two values then we will get the diameter of this shaft is the problem clear what we will going to do in this problem yes sir baki logo ka kya hua hai yes sir okay so let us solve the problem now by looking at this problem it is very much clear that this is a condition of combined loading if you see the shaft is subjected to a bending moment also as well as a torque also that is the shaft has need to be designed for combined loading so in that case we know that if we want to find out the maximum shear stress of the component that is how much maximum shear stress of the component we uh, also we have derived this relation from the mohr circle that tau max is equal to sigma 1 minus sigma 2 by 2 if we are considering x and y plane and in x plane maximum shear stress induced is sigma 1 and in y direction or in y uh, axis 
shear stress in, uh, sorry, maximum stress uh, principal stress induced is sigma 2 then we have this relation that is tau max is equal to sigma 1 minus sigma 2 by 2 which is nothing but this tau max of the component now somehow i have to find the value of sigma 1 the value of sigma 2 then we need to take the difference we will divide it by 2 we will get the value of maximum tau max of the component so how can we find out the value of sigma 1 and sigma 2 how can we find out the value of sigma 1 and sigma 2 <clears throat> how we can find out you know from the mohr circle that maximum and minimum principal stress that is sigma 1 comma 2 is given by sigma x plus sigma y by 2 plus minus times of under root sigma x minus sigma y by 2 whole square plus tau x y whole square if we are finding out the maximum and minimum principal stress for a 2d component yes or no this relation already you know from the mohar circle yes or no yes sir yes sir. fine so if you see in this problem in this problem only moment is acting as well as torque is acting then i know that due to this bending moment of 10 kilo newton in the shaft bending stress will be generated that is sigma b and due to a torque of 14 kilo newton meter on this shaft shear stress is generated tau and this shear stress value tau is nothing but this particular value and this sigma b is what see in y direction there is no normal stress present so i have to exclude Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So, in place of sigma x, substitute sigma b, and in place of tau xy, substitute tau, and let us see what the equation comes out to be. So, equation becomes sigma one comma 2 is equal to sigma x plus y by 2 sigma y is 0 and sigma x is nothing but sigma b bending stress so sigma y b by 2 plus minus times of under root sigma x minus sigma y by 2 whole square sigma y is 0 and sigma x is equal to sigma b so the equation becomes sigma b by 2 whole square plus due to this torque t shear stress will be generated and this is that is tau square is this equation clear <coughs> Is this equation clear to all of you? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Now we have to substitute sigma b or we have to replace sigma b and tau in terms of m and t that means in place of sigma b we have to do something so that bending moment m should come and in place of tau we have to do something so that this 
torque t will come so what can we replace or what can we substitute in place of sigma v and tau can anyone tell we know from the bending equation that bending stress sigma v is what it is m bending moment m into y by i and in this expression since the cross section is circular so i can write this equation as m into y is what y is half of the distance from the neutral axis and in case of shaft the cross section is circle and the overall diameter is d so half of the neutral axis will be dy2 divided by i i is pi by 64 into d to the power 4 so in place of sigma v i can replace this value yes or no hello yes sir similarly yes, sir. in place of tau which value i will replace for that i have to use the torsion equation that is t y j equal to tau y r Equal to g theta by l. We don't require that g theta by l because nothing has been given in the problem. So in place of tau, I can replace it by t into r by j. Again, I can write this equation as tau is equal to t into r is nothing but d by two. R is nothing but d by two. Divided by J is polar moment of inertia, and for a circular circular cross section, polar polar moment of inertia is pi by thirty two into d to the power four. So in place of tau, substitute this particular value. So once you substitute this value in place of sigma b and this particular value of tau in place of this tau, you will get the resulting equation as after solving you will get the resulting equation as this equation that is sigma one comma two is equal to sixteen upon pi d cube in bracket m. Plus minus under root of m square plus t square, where m is the bending moment and t is the torque. Is it clear? Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Fine. So now we can write that tau max for the component is given by sigma one minus sigma two by two, which is equal to tau max in simple tension test, which is S Y T by two. Since in this problem factor of safety is not given to me, so I will not multiply this two term with factor of safety. Now from this expression. Two two cancel. Resulting equation becomes sigma one minus sigma two is equal to S Y T. What will be the value of sigma one? Value of sigma one will be sixteen upon pi d cube in bracket m plus under root m square plus t square. And in place of sigma two, I will write sixteen upon pi d cube in bracket m minus under root m square plus t square. so now everything is given to you bending moment m is known to you torsional moment t is known to you fine you substitute all these values in this expression d you don't know so leave d as it is which is equal to this is syt and syt given is 180 mega pascal This is 180 mega pascal. So see in the problem, T and M is in kilo newton meter. So you have to convert it in mega newton meter. Why? Because in the right hand side, I am putting this SYT value in mega pascal. Otherwise, unit will not match, and you will get the wrong answer. 
and if you solve the entire expression you will get the value of d to be 99.1 mm or 100 mm that means according to shear stress theory of failure maximum permissible diameter of the shaft can be 100 mm if you make the dia of the shaft more than 100 mm then according to this maximum shear stress theory this shaft will fail is it clear yes sir simple problem fine so what was uh, means where you can where is the difficulty in this problem difficulty in this problem will be only to substitute the values of sigma 1 and sigma 2 in terms of m and t because we know the value uh, that the formula of sigma 1 and sigma 2 is in terms of sigma x sigma y and tau xy you need to convert those values of sigma x sigma y and tau xy in terms of m and t after that everything is given to you you will just put all the values and solve the equation to get the diameter of the shaft <coughs> okay so with this we will solve one last problem last problem from this module that is the sixth problem what this problem tells us a steel tube of 40 mm mean diameter that means mean diameter is given to you there is a tube whose mean diameter is 40 mm and 2 mm thickness thickness of that tube is 2 mm is under simple tension the entire tube is subjected to tension determine the torque that can be transmitted by the tube if the criteria of failure is maximum shear stress theory secondly maximum distortion energy theory thirdly maximum principal stress theory take factor of safety value equal to 3 poisson's ratio that is mu equal to 0.3 and syt of steel that means yield strength of steel is given as 240 mega pascal so how we can proceed any idea how we can proceed for this problem if you see in this problem mean diameter of tube is given to you you have to find out the outer diameter of the tube as well as the inner diameter of the tube because from the first line of the question from the first line of the question it is given that mean diameter of the tube is 40 mm and thickness of the tube is 2 mm from this line we understood that the tube is hollow in nature having the outer diameter as well as the inner diameter we need to find out both the two diameters by the help of these values that is mean diameter value and this thickness value is it clear hello yes sir so how we can calculate the outer and the inner diameter of a tube by the help of this mean diameter and thickness how we can calculate any idea <clears throat> any idea how you can calculate that means my tube is of it looks like this this is the tube now if you look this tube from the top side if you look this tube from the top side how it will look like it will look like this 
this is the outer diameter of the tube this is the inner diameter of the tube and this is the mean diameter of the tube denoted by dash 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 line is it clear hello yes sir is it clear fine so in the question mean diameter is given to me that means this particular value is given to me this is d mean this value is nothing but d small m d suffix m that is d mean fine so now by looking at the diagram can you tell me what is the value of outer diameter of the tube i have given you the hint now can you tell me by this top view of this tube that how what will be the value of outer diameter of the tube sir this 42 is, ha bolo kuch bol rahe ho bolo 42 sir कैसे हुआ मुझे तो वही समझना है कैसे हुआ सर मीन डायमीटर प्लस वो दिया हुआ है दो एम एम दैट मीन इफ दिस इज माई आउटर डायमीटर एंड दिस इज माई इनर डायमीटर देन इन बिटवीन आउटर एंड इनर डायमीटर दिस इज द थिकनेस ऑफ द ट्यूब ये सर नो होगा कि नहीं होगा ये थिकनेस दिस इज द थिकनेस ऑफ द ट्यूब fine then from the diagram it is very much clear that outer diameter capital d is equal to mean diameter plus plus this is t by 2 this distance is t by 2 and this particular distance is t by 2 so t by 2 plus t by 2 is t so the outer diameter is d mean plus thickness thickness t that is 40 plus 2 42 mm similarly i can get the value of inner diameter and value of inner diameter will be how much 38 that means that means wait okay this is the value of inner diameter this is the value of inner diameter and that we will get is uh, total is this much is mean diameter mean diameter Minus t by two this end and this side minus t by two so minus t by two minus t by two is minus t so the mean uh, inner diameter small d becomes mean diameter d mean minus thickness t that is forty minus two thirty eight mm is it clear the concept of outer diameter inner diameter how I have calculated from the mean diameter and thickness. क्लियर है हेलो यस सर यस ओके फाइन सो आई गॉट द वैल्यू ऑफ स्मॉल डी दैट इज इनर डायमीटर एज थर्टी एट एम एम एंड द आउटर डायमीटर एज फोर्टी टू एम एम फाइन सो अगेन रीड द क्वेश्चन वॉट इज गिवेन इन द क्वेश्चन question in the question mean diameter is given thickness is given and we need to determine the torque fine okay so if i need to determine the value of torque that means from the question it is very much clear that in the entire problem the body is subjected to shear stress due to torque since we need to find out how much torque is exerted by this steel tube that means what that means this steel tube is subjected to torsion only and due to that torque or due to that torsion shear stress is generated in the tube no other stress is there if that is the case we can use the torsion equation we have pyj equal to tau by r equal to g theta by l since 
I have to ignore this g into theta y l because I don't have any data of these values. So I have to take the first and the second uh, combination. Then the equation of shear stress tau becomes T into R by J. Now, since it is a hollow tube, since it is a hollow tube, so this equation of shear stress tau will be modified in with the hollow term then the equation becomes tau is equal to t into r by j j is what j is polar moment of inertia that will be pi by 32 outer diameter to the power 4 minus inner diameter to the power 4 so tau is equal to t into r is radius of the shaft is capital d by 2 outer diameter by 2 divided by pi by 32 d to the power 4 minus small d to the power 4 this is 2 16 the 32 and if you take this value to the numerator side then the resulting equation of shear stress becomes 16 t into d by pi times of capital D to the power 4 minus small d to the power 4. Is the step clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Now, in this expression, capital D, I have already calculated. Small d also we have calculated. So, I can write the equation of tau in terms of t because t I need to find out. Capital D is how much? Capital D is 42 mm. Small d is how much? Small d is 38 mm. So once you put the, these two values in this expression, then the equation of tau becomes 0 0.2084 into t mega pascal. Is it clear after putting the values of capital D and small d in that expression, the value of shear stress tau becomes 0 0.2084 times of t mega pascal. Any doubt so far? Hello? Any kind of doubt so far? No, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Now I have to equate, I have to equate this particular value of tau with, with different theories of failure. If it is shear stress theory, then how to equate this value of tau? If it is distortion energy theory, then how to equate the value of tau and so on. But we need to keep in mind that always you need to keep the value of shear stress within the permissible value of stress limit. And that permissible value, I can find it out by the help of factor of safety. I know that factor of safety is what? It is failure stress divided by allowable stress. So allowable stress becomes failure stress by factor of safety. That means this shaft should have maximum this value of allowable stress. Fine. So failure stress is what? Since in the question it has been given to you that SYT of the shaft material is 240. So the shaft will fail at SYT value. So the failure stress becomes your SYT and factor of safety given in the problem as 3. You will divide the value of SYT by 3. You will get the permissible stress in the tube that is 80 megapascal and while designing as a designer you need to keep in mind that the stress value which you are calculating from the given data that should be within this 80 megapascal limit value is it clear yes sir 
Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So now we need to find out what we need to find out the torque transmitted by the steel tube. Firstly, by maximum shear stress theory of failure. Okay. So according to maximum shear stress theory of failure, when this shaft or when this tube will fail, the tube will fail only when the maximum shear stress of this tube is equal to maximum shear stress of a standard specimen that we test in UTM. Maximum shear stress of the tube already you have calculated. This value already you have calculated. That is this value 0.2084 times of T which you need to equate with the maximum shear stress when you will test this tube in UTM and you know that in UTM the maximum value of shear stress is how much is SYT by 2 and if you take the factor of safety into account the formula becomes SYT by 2 into factor of safety so 0 0.2084 times of T is equal to SYT now your SYT by factor of safety is how much already we have calculated SYT by factor of safety is this value 80 so it will be 80 by 2 so if you solve this expression you will get the value of torque and that torque T is 192 Newton meter that means maximum permissible limit of torque if you use maximum shear stress theory to design this problem will be 192 Newton meter is it clear Yes, Any doubt? Yes, it is clear. Okay. Okay. Fine. <clears throat> Let me erase all these things. Okay. Next is we need to find out the maximum. Dis uh, we need to find out the value of torque by applying maximum distortion energy theory. Then, according to maximum distortion energy theory, any material will fail when the maximum strain energy of distortion per unit volume in that material becomes equal to maximum strain energy of distortion of a standard specimen which we test in UTM and if you remember we did long proof we did a long proof and from that proof we got the design equation if we want to use maximum distortion energy theory and that design equation is nothing but the equation of 1 minus stress that is SYT is equal to under root of half times of sigma 1 minus sigma 2 whole square plus sigma 2 minus sigma square plus sigma 3 minus sigma 1 whole square since in the problem factor of safety is given to me so the resulting equation will take the shape SYT by factor of safety is equal to the right hand side and since in this problem since uh, in this problem there, uh, there is no sigma 3 it is not a three dimensional problem so I will assume sigma 3 to be 0 I will assume sigma 3 to be 0 if sigma 3 is 0 then this particular expression takes the shape SYT by factor of safety is equal to under root this is a minus b whole square plus sigma 2 square plus sigma uh, 1 square if you solve it you will get the expression sigma 1 square minus sigma 1 sigma 2 plus sigma 2 square now if you see in the entire problem only torque is acting only shear stress is acting there is no sigma that means this is a case of pure shear this is a problem of pure shear stress and if you remember we have derived the relationship of pure shear stress as that means if shear stress tau is given by for x y say one represent x plane and two represent y plane then we can write tau one two is how much it is sigma one minus sigma 2 by 2 since in the given problem there is no sigma 
one and sigma two. There is no normal stress acting in the problem. Only shear stress is acting. That means it is a case of pure shear. Only shearing is happening. So if only shear is happening, then in place of sigma two, I can substitute it as minus times of sigma one. If this is the case in this expression, sigma one minus Sigma two is minus times of sigma one. That means plus sigma one by two by two. That is two sigma one by two. Two two cancel. Tau becomes equal to tau one two becomes equal to sigma one. This is the condition of pure shear. So sigma one is what sigma one is nothing but minus times of sigma two. Which is nothing but equal to shear stress tau. This is the case of pure shear stress. So in place of sigma one, I will. So I will substitute uh, sigma one by tau and sigma two by minus tau in this particular expression. Then. The resulting expression takes the shape S Y T by factor of safety equal to under root of tau square minus tau in bracket sigma two is again minus tau so minus minus plus tau so plus tau square plus sigma two is again minus tau whole square which is tau square so it becomes. Two for S Y T is given in the problem. That is two forty divided by factor of safety is three under root one plus one two plus one three. That is three tau square. Or this three divided by two forty is eighty. Eighty is equal to root three times of tau. Or tau is equal to eighty by root three. Now what is this tau? This tau already we have calculated for the problem. That is point two zero eight four times of t. So substitute the value of tau as point two zero eight four times of t, which is equal to eighty by root three. If you solve this expression, you will get the value of torque to be two twenty one point six three newton meter. This is the maximum permissible value of torque if you use. Distortion energy theory to predict the failure of the tube. Is it clear? Any doubt? No sir. Okay. And the last part of the problem is we need to determine the torque by maximum principal stress theory. Now, what is maximum principal stress theory? According to this theory, any material or any component will fail when maximum principal stress in that component is either equal to S Y T for ductile material or it is equal to S U T for brittle material. And if you consider the factor of safety into account, so you are, you have to divide this S Y T and S U T by factor of safety. Since in this problem sigma maximum is nothing but tau tau maximum, and that tau already we have uh, calculated that is point two zero eight four times of T, which is equal to S Y T by factor of safety. S Y T given is two forty. Divided by factor of safety is three. If you solve this expression, you will get the value of torque T to be three eighty three point eight seven newton meter. That means if you want to design your tube by maximum principal stress theory of failure, then the maximum permissible uh, torque in the tube should not exceed. Three eighty three point eight seven Newton meter. Any doubt? No sir. Okay. So with this, I complete or we have completed this second module. Now three more modules are remaining for my part. And in the next class, we will be starting the third module. That is, 
how to design any component when a fluctuating load is acting in that component that means if the magnitude of load varies continuously with time then how to design any component that is your module number 3 and this module number 3 is little bit big module so it will take uh, some amount of longer time to complete okay okay sir fine and uh, wait okay so for this second module you can refer chapter 4 from vb bhandari i repeat for second module you can refer chapter 4 from vb bhandari all the topics are not there because in chapter 4 you will find cotter joint knuckle joint that is also there that is the part of i think sdb sir is taking that part cotter joint knuckle joint but you see the see my part and accordingly you prepare uh, you study from this particular book chapter number 4 okay sir in the first midterm what syllabus are there in first midterm first let us let, let me know when the first midterm is i even don't know when is the first midterm so in first midterm uh, module 1 is there the module 2 is also there and in module 3 till that much portion how much we have covered that means if say next week is your uh, first midterm then be previous to that next week how much we will cover in third module till that your syllabus uh, till that uh, is your syllabus for your midterm fine okay sir okay so third module will take little bit time because many topics are there in third module and uh, so these three modules are finally left in my part third module and from fourth module a part that is welded joint and this is the fifth part okay so with this i end my today's lecture over here again we will meet on thursday with the third module if anyone has not given his or her attendance you may please give your attendance otherwise you may leave the meeting thank you thank you sir hmm <clears throat>